So uh, hi guys, we're uh, on our way to San Francisco to uh, Rocket Space and Rocket Space is one of the bigger incubators here and um, we're meeting up there with the CEO of Digital Genius. They are one of the companies in Rocket Space and we're meeting uh, with Mikhail. He's a Russian guy that started Digital Genius and they are actually a company that uh, is into the field of artificial intelligence in customer experience. So what they do is they basically read all the data from customer service they put it into their model, their model translated, translates it into algebra. And uh, when a customer asks a question, they match the question with the previous answers. And with that information, they make a suggestion for an answer. So their goal is to enhance customer service and basically help humans to deliver a faster customer service and a more personalized customer service. So I wanna ask him some questions about the role of AI in customer experience for my new book. So that's what we're gonna do now. Customers the day after tomorrow, it's going to be my new book and yep. I would like to have your opinion on a, a few things. Okay. Um, let's start with the most important thing, the customer. Yes. How do you think with your experience that uh, customer expectations will change in the next few years? Well, what's your view on that? Uh, perfect. So I think the world has changed obviously and customers today have much higher expectations to the brands that they talk with every single day. I think two profound themes we're going to see unfold in the near future. Can be one number one is the speed at which a customer will get a response from a brand whether it's a question or a compliment or a comment you need as a brand to be able to respond very quickly because attention spans of the younger generations have significantly shrunk over time whereas years ago you can you know feel satisfied if your hold time is less than five minutes today if it's less than five seconds you're already risking losing the customer that's theme number one timing. And theme number two is a shift from reactive servicing to proactive um, conversations. Okay. And a good example of that is a company should be able to use technology in a way to predict uh, before I have an issue with their service or before I have a question. And they should have a way to reach out to me proactively to help me avoid that problem to begin with. And when that happens, I think customers will be very happy. All right. And which technologies um, will play a big role in that? So in the timing and the proactivity, I think there's definitely a, a variety of technologies that'll, that'll, that'll play in that space. Um, we're in the machine learning, deep learning space, so I can speak to that in much more detail. I think, um, you know, what has changed in this world is the abundance of historical data that is available to brands to leverage, uh, to, to train intelligent algorithms. Uh, to be able to then do predictive things and to serve their customers much faster through conversations. So no doubt about that, AI and machine learning are going to be pretty much table stakes for brands if they want to keep up with the customer's expectations. I would say that's number one. There are a few other technologies, of course, that make the conversation with customers more immersive, like AR and VR, more exciting. You know, you have the ability to tap into networks of influencers, um, to, to be able to sort of transport your brand's message from your marketing team to the grassroots community so that customers can feel like, you know, they're truly engaging with the brand. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at what you guys do, it's, it's AI mm -hmm. um, using it in customer experience. Yeah. Maybe it's good to explain a little bit what, what yeah. your product does. Sure. So it, it turns out that what has changed with AI is uh, greater access to historical data. So email transcripts and chat logs and social media records are accessible for brands and they need to use them for something good. Mm -hmm. The second thing is the increase in compute power. So you have companies like NVIDIA producing next generation GPUs, which are essentially these little chips that let you take all that historical data and train neural networks on those GPUs extremely fast and cost efficiently. And um, all of this is creating this, this, this this scenario where machines can start replicating some human behaviors. Not all of them, mm -hmm. maybe not even end to end, but certain components of conversations between brands and customers are very ripe for uh, machine powered uh, augmentation. And so what that means in our business is we plug our application on top of the contact center's existing software infrastructure. So if you're a big telecom or an airline and you have a contact center with hundreds or thousands of human agents answering questions, um, we now have the Digital Genius application sitting on top of Salesforce Service Cloud, Zendesk, or any other one of these um, customer service platforms. It trains on the historical records. 
it converts all the language records into mathematical word vectors to then train the neural nets using mathematics as opposed to just pure linguistics, mm -hmm. which creates a much more resilient predictive model. So whenever new messages come in from your customer, whether it's through Twitter, Facebook Messenger, email, live chat, what have you, the machine can actually run predictions based on all the history that it learned. And those predictions will do the following. They'll save time on predicting metadata. What is this case about? What is this email? Where does it have to go? Who's the best internal agent to handle this? So the basic routing and meta tagging. And the second thing it will do is it will predict the answer. So now your agents are not just looking at the question, they also have an answer suggested by the machine and they can approve this answer and personalize it and the machine will learn from that. So over time, these conversations are becoming much more efficient, allowing your contact center to be better. Yeah, well, it's actually like um, intelligence augmented. Eh? The, yeah. the service agents can do a better job thanks to yes. uh, AI software here. Um, how do the humans react on that? If you, yeah. like you guys installed that in, in, in the software at KLM and other big yeah. companies, how do the humans react to that? I, that's the perfect question. So the the, the fear that's being spread sort of in the media is that robots will take jobs and it'll happen very soon and it's going to be a terrible thing. Um, if we go back in history a little bit, we'll see several iterations of technology always being there to uh, improve business processes. And as a result, humans have to find a way to evolve their role. So I think what the implementation of machine learning and AI inside contact centers will lead to is an evolution of the job description of the human agent. Who are they? What skills do they have? What are they responsible for? And I guarantee you, and we, we lived inside contact center for years mm -hmm. to understand what is it that these human agents are doing and how can our machine learning algorithms really help them? And if you go there and you ask an agent or a representative, what do you love to do about your job, in your job, and what do you hate in your job? I can almost guarantee you that the things they hate the most are the things that the machine is the best at doing today. And the things they love, like genuine conversations with customers, creating value, solving complex issues, and using their human level intelligence is much more appealing to the human agent. And if the machine can just take care of all the repetitive stuff, then they'll be better off. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Um, can I just test a few hypotheses um, yeah, yeah. with you? Um, one of the hypotheses that I have in the book is that uh, consumers will take more and more decisions based on algorithms and less on their personal gut feeling, mm -hmm. both in pre-sales and after sales. Mm -hmm. Do you agree or disagree? And, and consumers. So and consumers, so, yes. Okay. So, for example, if I am. Um, if, I, if, if I'm a traveler and I want to look for a new vacation destination, yeah. for instance, normally I would follow my gut and I would say, I feel like going to the beach, so why don't I book a vacation in an island somewhere? Now, in the future, the hypothesis is that machines will actually, and algorithms will learn everything they can about you and make suggestive predictions as to, hey, looks like based on all these inputs we know about you, this may be a good time for you to get away and go skiing. Yeah. And therefore, I would follow the algorithm suggestion. Okay, that, that's a very interesting concept. I think it has definitely a lot of truth to it. Um, think about the way we make gut decisions. Mm -hmm. We don't make gut decisions with no inputs. Mm -hmm. The inputs we process, yeah. and then we make a gut decision around what should we do. The machine will simply give you more inputs to work with. It'll say, listen, I know that you like this type of food at, you know, in these types of restaurants, so I think you should go to this restaurant this evening. And that's just an input. Yeah. And it's an input that is much faster for me to get access to than if I had to research Google and I had to look through my previous history of where I've been and how I rated each restaurant. So I think there's definitely validity. Machines and algorithms will provide humans with more inputs to make better decisions. Yeah. And do you think that will change marketing? Because now, mm. Uh, an old slogan in marketing is that um, perception is reality. Mm -hmm. So today the perceived value of a company is really yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, my feeling is that in the future, real value yeah. will become more important again compared to perceived value because the, we will outsource some of the search processes yeah. to machines yeah. and the feedback that we will get is more based on real facts yeah. and actual information than on a image that we create through marketing communication. I agree with you. I think the idea for people is that, you know, th there's a lot of noise in the world and it's coming from everywhere. Countless news channels, 
countless social platforms that are constantly bombarding people with new information, new images, new text, new, just new announcements. And so in the consumer of the future is going to develop sort of a, an allergy to an overwhelming amount of data and overwhelming amount of information. Yeah. So the winning brands will figure out how do you, um, how do you help customers dispel all the noise and actually get to the core root solution? Mm -hmm. And like in the travel sector, it might be, you know, less marketing of the destinations and more true value of what they're going to get out of it. And how, how that shapes out that remains to be seen. But the thesis, I think, is incredibly on point, which is that over time, customers are going to expect much more real value from the brands and they will react less so to the um, to the spin and the hype um, around a product or a service and that's okay that's natural and that's perfectly fine and do you think that uh, or what do you think the role is of those personal assistants like uh, siri and amazon echo mm -hmm. in the in the journey of customers do you see a big role for that small role yeah what do you think uh, t t today i mean t all of those assisted uh, all the technologies um are like this is day one for these mm -hmm. technologies. So there's a very long journey and path ahead of us for per, for AI powered virtual assistants, um, audio assistants. Yeah. And uh, today they're helping us sort through information, uh, outsource some common tasks, order, order something online, um, find out some factoid information on the go. And that's like tier one of things that make my life easier. Yeah. But I think over time, as we get even more data, and more usage of these of these systems and as the technology evolves we will get to a place where you can have a full-on conversation with a machine or with a little robot that's going to help you yeah. make decisions it's going to help you find better information it's going to help you take actions on your behalf so you no longer have to worry about certain things mm -hmm. and that unlocks so much time and so much human potential in your brain not to focus on the things that are already outsourced to your machine yeah. And then you can focus on the things that really help you maximize the quality of life. Yeah, yeah, I like that idea. I like that point. And the, I think one of the consequences is that at a certain moment, um, you know, we talk a lot about technology, but in the end, it's about the customer that has a, that's having a better uh, experience. Technology is one thing. I think companies will also have to be more explicit in their ethical choices yeah. because of that. Uh, just think about Amazon Echo. Uh, it's in your house, it can mm -hmm. see and hear everything that you yeah. do. Um, I think at a certain point, consumers will expect um, really explained or very clear ethical choices of, of companies related to all these new technologies. For sure. Do you agree with that? Definitely. I think, uh, I think privacy is one of the most fundamental and important topics that are going to get even more attention um, as time goes on. Because as these technologies become more uh, innovative, they also become more invisible and we sort of stop noticing them. But that doesn't mean they don't notice you and every single thing that you do. So today we have, you know, software that can track all of your behavior on the internet. You know, they can see which websites you go to, which ads you engage with, which text you read, and what you do as a result of that. And that's like, you know, also version one. Now expand that to the real three-dimensional world around us where there's a device inside your home and it can hear everything you're talking about. I mean, there are going to be some significant uh, you know, practices, best practices that need to be established as time goes on to make sure that consumers feel very comfortable around the devices they're putting in their home. Yeah, I agree. Last uh, question. Um, if companies are watching this, uh, we talked about AI, customer expectations, ethical choices. Um, mm -hmm. What would you recommend companies to do at this moment to prepare themselves for that day yeah. after tomorrow? How, how, what should be their action point after watching this video? Absolutely. So I think the day after tomorrow for the customer is definitely coming sooner than everyone can expect. Um, I think that by creating some sort of AI machine learning strategy today is really a smart move. And whether you end up actually partnering with a supplier or deploying something as a test, it's another story, but getting educated around this space is, is fundamental. And so first step is to get educated. Second step is to create a strategy. And then the third step is to possibly test some things out, depending on what industry you're in. Look at your peers in the industry. What are they doing to get ahead? Because they're not stopping and you don't want to fall behind. So you obviously want to learn from them. 
Um, that's my advice, is to get educated about AI, machine learning, augmented reality, and all of the buzzwords of, of the day, because there are buzzwords for a reason, and chances of them actually becoming a fundamental table stakes technology in, in, in the future are very high. So the best thing you could do is get educated, create a strategy, and then go on and, and put that strategy into action. All right, fantastic. Awesome, Thanks thank, so you. thank you. Thank you, Steven.